it was incredible it's on disney we decided to talk about it here i watched it with a friend named jalay it was very very fun very interesting lots of social i don't know politics and interactions and you'll see if you've seen it already you're going to love the commentary i think if you haven't it might be fun to listen to this and then watch it watch it yourself hope you enjoy please follow along and thanks for listening welcome back to today's podcast I have a special guest, Jalay. Hello. As you saw in the title. And uh, we were just hanging out at dinner the other, or tonight actually, and um, she started talking about this the movie Elemental, as you saw in the title, and I was uh, like, I was saying, she started telling me the story and I was saying, I really wanted to see this movie, I've been wanting to see it, and since last um, she also mentioned about The Little Mermaid and how we did that last week, or I think it was last week. And I was like, let's do the Elemental one. That would be so much fun. And so I was like, let's watch it and do it. So we're going to do that today. Yay. So, yeah. <laughs> so um, we're just going to do kind of the same format where we watch the movie and um, and then talk about it. Is there anything you want to say before we start? I watched this movie like two weeks ago mm-hmm. and I was pretty impressed by it. I also watched like the producer's mm. explanation of it afterwards. Mm. And so I, I really enjoyed it. You can yeah. probably hear me drinking. Uh oh. Uh oh. Baby's up. All right, so baby's back asleep and let's just get started. So. We just watched the first little opening, it's still opening scenes, kind of, like, they're coming off the boat, like, on their little sailboat, and they're coming, they landed in this new world type place, and they're, like, the only ones that are fire, and there's, like, they're showing, like, water and trees and, what else, clouds, and it was kind of funny, like, right away, they were using, like, their own, lang- like, fire language, and they couldn't spell their names, it's so interesting, like like you said, it's like immigration type, and they didn't have names that equate to their land, the other the land that they were going to, so they gave them new names. I don't know, I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah, so you? I was telling Georgia earlier that when I was watching the producer's part, mm-hmm. he was explaining how this was um, like a story of a family that immigrated into this land or into this little world but i was i also thought it was interesting how most movies are Mm. have to do with people yeah or they have to do with animals and this is the first movie or one of the first movies i've watched where the animation has to do with something completely different which in this case is elements so you see like animated trees and animated clouds and fire like i don't think i've ever seen animated fire before not really no so and you were talking about inside out but even that they're kind of like mini little like feelings of her brain you know Mm -hmm. more like than even i feel like this is even different than inside out you know what i mean yeah for sure so I think it's already really cute, like already to the beginning. And it's cool that the beginning of the movie, they're like approved into the land. Welcome to Elemental. Is that what he said? Or welcome to Elemental Uh Land or something? Elemental Land? Yeah, I think Elemental. Okay, yeah, it's just cool. And it's, I thought it was so cute how the water just pours out and then they're people, actually. Like the water, it's just funny. It's very unique. (laughs) What else? Anything else? I'm just, I don't know. I don't know. And I like that they were already approved. I thought that was really cool that they're like, welcome here. You're already, you're like here. You're got your visa, whatever, whatever. You're here. Mm -hmm. You're approved. Yeah. I don't know. I thought that was interesting. Anyways. It was so cute. Um, The part. Okay. So Jalay was kind of explaining to me because I didn't get it when they were on the bus and they were like, 
the the water like spilled on the girl and so she had to eat wood because i didn't catch that right away but he she saw it right away that she had to eat wood and then she came back i don't know i just feel like that's so creative i just that's so cool i just wish i would have thought of that that's so cool um and then nobody would rent to them because they're dangerous like it's so interesting i'm trying to think of how that would is there a parallel to like humans with that that people are just like goofy to other people like racist or whatever yeah well like for example in in the first case they knocked on the door of a of a house for rent that was wood oh so then they would have caught it on fire yeah but like in real life i wonder if it's like i don't know yeah like whatever whatever things they've heard about those people like prejudice type yeah and they don't want to rent out to those people or whatever Mm. maybe yeah, that's. Un- I was just trying to think of a parallel. I, for some reason, I couldn't think of a parallel. Pfft, I don't know. Um, and then, um, but that makes sense. And then, um, um, what was I going to say? Ooh. And then they had a baby. I didn't catch that she was pregnant, I guess. But then they had a baby, and I thought that was so cool. Like, they, they were so excited to share new life, even though their place was, like, kind of in shambles at the moment but they were so excited and they're so hopeful and joyful about the new life that they are coming to i don't know it's already really good (laughs) anything else you want to add no i think that's good it's so good okay okay so wait do you want to start you go uh yeah so um they they're just showing the relationship between the daughter and the the dad and that's really sweet Yeah. yeah And then, um, and then they they made this sign for the shop that they're gonna start, and so they're starting the shop, and little by little, it's kind of like a time lapse, and people are starting to come into the shop. And what we found interesting is the people that are coming in, they have different accents mm-hmm. as they do, so it's kind of showing a difference in the in the languages or the cultures that are coming in yeah and then the time lapse shows more and more fires around them around that little neighborhood yeah yeah it's almost like they are bringing more because of their shop they're bringing more and more of their culture like the fireplace the fire culture or whatever which is really really cool i don't know it's so real life and yet it's just really like bringing it to life in a weird way in a cool way yeah it's it's good okay so we just watched the scene um what was the scene she gets uh she has like a hot head she's kind of temperamental with customers Quite literally hot head yeah literally <laughs> yeah like red hair whatever whatever but um she i guess that's a stereotype not all people with red hair oh no i meant because she's fire oh yes <laughs> um well that too okay Okay, so she gets um, upset at customers. She does everything really, really good, except she has a hard time with customers. And she'll blow up on them. And then what was the next part? Oh, she, like, is talking to the customers if you get off your hot ash. Is that what she said? No, she said, um, when are you going to get off your lazy ash? Lazy ash. And pay for something. Yes. Oh, yeah, and pay for something. And she was being sassy with the customers that are, like, regulars and but that was pretty funny because it's a child's movie yes and they were like they just something for the parents something for the parents but but yeah that was really cute (laughs) and and they did it obviously tasteful instead of but we knew what they're saying and then um the weird agenda wait you want to talk about this part oh sure yeah um so there's what's the scene the her mom is in like this back room and she's doing like this like fortune telling Mm -hmm. thing uh with a couple and and it's like this love thing right and so she's like burning incense and whatnot and then super weird um and then there's this couple and there's like this big big guy big fire guy and then Mm -hmm. there's like a smaller individual (laughs) that looks like a woman (laughs) and and they're both fire and and then so like it just it just looks normal, like a normal couple. And then mm. all of a sudden, the little one opens her mouth, and mm. she's not a she. Yeah. Um. She's like, rah, rah, and it's you're like, oof. It just it felt voice. very. It just feels very unnatural. Yeah. For the scene, for the moment. But it's almost yeah. like it's a transgender 
Do you think it's a transgender fire? Yeah, probably. Something like but that, like meant to look like a female. It's so obvious that they're trying to sneak in this little political agenda. Yeah, which is a little, which is frustrating, but you know Disney these days. Um, mm-hmm. It is how it is. But I just think, I don't know that I would let my kids watch this show because of those sneaky things. But it's good for, I feel like, to watch it myself. So I'm not like, no, this is like inappropriate for my kids, but like... I have to see it first to know if it's good or bad, but those sneaky things are like, it's, those are exactly what they want to make it normalized, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, like like they sneak it in little by little and then people get used to it little by little and Mm -hmm. then the things that used to be a big deal aren't a big deal any longer. Mm -hmm. Just like the devil, literally. Mm -hmm. It's literally the devil, which is crazy. Another thing kind of on a different topic that I noticed, um, so... At one point, water, two water individuals oh, yeah, walk the, into the shop. They're kind of like bullies. Yeah, they're kind of like bullies. And so they're like, they're like splashing their water on yeah. their fire stuff. And breaking stuff, essentially, yeah. right? It's breaking it. Yeah. yeah. And, but then, so the dad, he's like, oh, water. So it is interesting because it is kind of showing the reverse race, you know, like racial yeah. tension. Like racial it's not just. prejudice, kind yeah. of. Because the the water in this in this movie seems like the white people, oh, and then the fire is, seems like that? the immigrants like, who aren't white. Okay, and it um, can be anyone, kind of. But are they kind of making it look like somebody? It it like kind of like yeah. To me, it seems like you'll see later. Sorry, I'm kind of getting is ahead it of eight? myself. You've seen it because um, they're I I don't know. Well, no, it's not necessarily, like, physical. It's more just in, like, the social settings. Like, okay. you'll see a little later. But um, it is interesting because the, the dad is actually showing racism against the water as well. Mm. You know, so it's not just... It's, it's not both just sides. It's both sides that is being prejudiced to each other. So yeah. it, it is interesting. But, yeah, that's all I had to say about that. Um, I thought that was just really interesting. Like, the weird... The, the political push... With, I mean, the weird incense and the fortune telling, like you said, and the the gay or transgender agenda mm-hmm. that they had. And then also um, that they kind of make you, they're kind of putting all these different people in categories. And I'm sure there'll be more because we have so much more of the movie to go mm-hmm. before we can tell. I but, I but I feel like they're putting people in categories or no? Well, yeah, kind of. but it, it's, like, it, it is reality. Like, at least the prejudice thing, like, it is reality. Like, there are these different people groups. Yeah. And I think, in, in, a, in a way, it's good because it's showing, the reality like, of the it. reality and how things don't have to necessarily be... Be that way. That way, or they don't yeah. have to fit in the box. But then they're also, like, pushing the political agenda of, like, oh, it's okay to have transgender... Uh, yeah. couples and it's interesting because it's like because we're Christian I don't know do you talk about that on your podcast <laughs> because we're Christian yes. we see certain things as sin and other people don't mm-hmm. and so for us it's like for like a children's movie you wouldn't want to see someone drinking alcohol on a children's right. movie or someone having sex on a children's movie so for us, seeing a transgender couple, to us, that's, that's wrong. Right. You know what I just thought of when you said that? What? Pinocchio. In Pinocchio, he drinks beer and smokes cigarettes. Oh, that's interesting. I know. And that, I'm like, that's horrible. Huh. What a horrible thing to, like, push. Well, was it, like, a good thing or a bad thing? They're showing it as a bad thing. Okay, so movie. that's... That's because I feel like that's a little different. Okay. Because then at least that's true. It's kind of showing like p- because the re- reality right, of it, how bad it is. Yeah, because isn't, isn't it in Pinocchio it, where he's he's like doing all this stuff and then like he has life the bad goes consequences. Badly. Yeah, he has bad consequences. He turns into a donkey or an ass, whatever. Mm-hmm. Ass, whatever. An ash. Yeah, an ash. <laughs> there you go, an ash. So, but like in these movies, it almost seems like there. It's not. It's not something wrong. Right? That's so true. It, the they're sneaking it in there as good. just, oh, okay, it's something that we point. should all be okay with. Yes, that's a good point. And they're okay. sneaking it into Touché. cartoons because in they their want. eyes, it's not something wrong. In our eyes, it is. And they want to make it normal. Yeah. So interesting. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, so the little boy that's a little tree is so freaking adorable. I, like, love him. He's got a really cute voice. Yes, and his little flower armpit hair because he's all grown up. So cute, and he loves her, and it's the cutest. Oh, did you hear that in the microphone that I bumped it? No. Oh, you didn't? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I bumped the table that it's sitting on, and I feel like it makes so much noise. Um uh yeah he's adorable and it was funny how she said i thought it was really interesting how she was like this city is not made for fire because the water when the train goes over like the it's like um what is that called like a it's like a wave that like overflows yeah over the bridge but is that like what's that like a uh i can't think of the word an a tram a tramway a tramway it's like yeah. a tramway and then the water overflows yeah yeah that's why I, I, and then it always, and she was just saying how the city's not made for fire because that wave all the time. I don't know. I'm trying to think of like why that would be in real life. Like what were they trying to say with that? You know, like this city's not made for whatever culture, you know, I don't know. I just thought that was interesting. Or like, what were they trying to say? Well, that? I feel like it could it could really include a lot of different things. Like, it could even include people who are handicapped. Oh yeah. Like, you know, there are so many totally. places that are not like do not think about handicapped right. people. So many people they can't so get. So I, I feel like this movie is very like there's a huge umbrella and it can include so many different people and so many That's different so people interesting. groups. Yeah so interesting um that makes sense and she's trying to do the deliveries like as faster than her dad i guess i didn't catch that until you said that she was trying to do that that's really cute because she's trying to like learn how to run the store right is that why she's trying to do that Mm -hmm. so cute i want to say one thing winner winner charcoal dinner what so cute <laughs> oh i love that winner winner charcoal dinner. they have a lot of puns in this movie really it's fun. yeah and i love i'm gonna mention every single one because that's hilarious winner winner charcoal dinner i'm gonna like gonna start saying that now it's so cute that when he comes in and he's a, she comes in after all the deliveries and he's asleep oh i have to i have to turn my head this way i can see it's not picking it up as much um He's asleep, and she, like, loves him so much, and it's so cute, and she's so happy, and she loves him, and it's so adorable. That's all. Yeah, their relationship is super, super cute. Yeah, because you can see in the beginning, and then how it has unfolded. I don't know. You can just tell. It's just the way that they made the characters. So cute. So I just noticed. I don't think it caught on camera. <laughs> on, um, um, so I just noticed that... Uh, they're wearing chain mail for clothes. Like, it's not see-through necessarily, but the, there's a blanket he's wearing that is, but her dress is not see-through, but it's chain mail. And it just reminds me of the Renaissance Festival because there's, like, super inappropriate clothes you can buy there where they're see-through, but it's chain mail, and that's all that people wear. <laughs> oh, my dear. Yes. And it's super inappropriate, <laughs> but it's the Renaissance Festival. What do you expect? She's right? got a really cute dress, though. Yeah, it's her like dress purplish. is so cute. Her dress is adorable. Okay, I'm excited to see what happens. That's it. So what does the blue flame reference? Is that like their spiritual guide or something? Because she's like, please, she takes a piece of wood, puts it in the fire and says, blue flame, please let tomorrow go well. Is that like their god or like their center or like... So they'll kind of explain a little oh, more later. later. Oh, okay. Maybe we should. Yeah, maybe we should wait. But t- to me, it, it seems more like their cultural fire. So it's more of a cultural thing okay. rather than a god. Okay. But the way that they interact with it, it almost seems like, yeah, I don't know. It, it, it does kind of seem like they view it more than just a cultural thing. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's interesting because I just noticed it because tomorrow's a big day and she's like kind of praying to it kind of in a way. yeah it does seem like they kind of pray to it and yeah. worship it a little bit yeah offering giving offerings of smoke of of wood i don't know okay so we just saw a couple scenes um it was her job to do like red dot sale and if she did a good job she could run the store but she completely messed it up she got irritated and then the pipe burst 
because she was irritated. They didn't let the inspector water guy in. And then he cited that it was going to cite them for all these problems and that they didn't have a that they didn't have a inspection and so that she chased him tried to stop him and they she he was going to put the the tickets in he did blah 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 they went to the inspector big honcho guy and he is shutting their store down because she messed it all up and then when she got home the dad was like did the water guy do that and she was like, yeah, he did, like, lied to his dad, lied to her dad. And then there was some prejudice because it's like, oh, the water people are always trying to water us down. Mm-hmm. But she did it, not not, not the water guy. Yeah. But very interesting. Any thoughts? Mm, I'm trying to think. Um, I thought it was really interesting how the animation, how they just, like, I don't know the water guy he's like crying the whole time yeah. it's just like interesting to me how they like portrayed the water like they're constantly crying you know i don't know like is that all of the water people were constantly crying no not always but just the fact that he couldn't stop crying the whole time it was just funny. yeah it's cute and and you mentioned like the way his tears are like, I mean, the way that they animate the tears, I think a little it's bit, like they're like straight down. Water. And then, yeah, then they sh- they have different times shooting. where it's shooting, protruding from him <laughs> water. And he was just constantly sad. And it was cute when he first came down the pipe, he was like super jacked. And she's like, whoa. And she was like, actually, like maybe interested in him or something or like shocked to see him. And then when she's like, oh, this pipe got me all bent out of shape. And then he was like super chubby, like big belly and stuff. <laughs> and she then immediately was like, ah, and like didn't want anything, you know, was mad it's, at him. Or didn't whatever. want anything to do with him. Yeah, really. Didn't want anything to do with him. I thought that was funny. Um, but it also showed at the end there, because they go to like the inspection, yeah. I don't know, office or whatever. Yeah. And the main guy who's about to send the the, the citations, yeah. um, he's a fern and he has tons of like plants. natural yeah plants inside of his office and so when she gets so embarrassed mm-hmm. and like like her passion mad. is so yeah. well i don't know if it's mad it's more like she's passionate and she's yeah. so embarrassed and passionate that she like explodes mm-hmm. and all of his natural foresty things because yeah. it's like wood one of the elements is wood or mm-hmm. earth or whatever A tree and, or yeah. yeah earth i think yeah earth. and so all of the earthy things things that he had in his office like burnt up immediately Mm -hmm. and so it kind of shows how like it it just shows how all the elements cannot coexist you know what i'm saying yeah like is there something that they're trying to say i don't know that it's very difficult for them to coexist in quite tight tight quarters like that or like that they need more space or they need distance or they need yeah i don't know but it's obvious like that's a reality like at least in this movie with mm-hmm. the elements like it is a reality like you can't mix oh and she even said that to that little boy who has a crush on her oh yeah she said um elements don't mix yeah and so it's like it, it's i think it's showing the reality of the situation of like she's fire he's water he's earth and they really can't mix or at least but, some I mean, of them can't mix yeah they can't mix but it's like, are they trying to show, like, a parallel with, like, people that different cultures can't mix? Like, it's difficult for them to mix? Is that what they're trying to say in the beginning? Like, they're setting something up, obviously. Right. But in all that we know right now in the first 24 minutes, it's like... It's showing what people may think, think or yeah. believe you know about like the cultures that it's really difficult for them to mix and people I mean obviously people do but I think they're setting something up and you've seen the movie so you know what is about to happen but yeah yeah um so the next part is that they're kind of explaining the story about how they why they had to leave their like where they lived before originally that they had that blue flame 
um, originally, but the dad saved it. There was a big storm, and it, this, the blue thing, the blue flame got knocked over. He saved some, and then they ended up having to leave because there was a big storm, and she was pregnant. The mom was pregnant, and th that was the last time that the dad ever saw his family, and they came to this, the new world, the new place, and to start a new life. And, and so the mom was just talking about that as they were patching up all the holes in the basement. And yeah. Yeah. Something we talked about earlier too that we noticed while mm -hmm. we were watching is the type of music that they have in the background. Oh, yeah. Um, like when she went over to see the... the um, Origin... Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The when she was chasing place. the inspection guy. Um, yeah. <clears throat> the music in the background was interesting because it was like drums, kind of like what you'd hear for like an African, African culture. Type music, yeah. But then like the type of language that was sung was almost seemed Asian. In yeah. A way. And so it was interesting because they're, I, I, I Maybe they're sense that the they're two? definitely, well, it, it seems to me that they're being very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, they're trying to not be very specific, which I think is really cool. Like they're trying to yeah. to make it very umbrella like, like I said earlier. So And they're trying not to like point at one culture, but at the same time they I can see similarities. Like you you're able to point out the drums with African type music and the Asian as well. But then the the houses of where they lived before kind of our mixture of African and Asian as well mm -hmm. looking yeah for sure. compared to like more looking like the United States or Europe one of the mm -hmm. two it kind of looks like Europe yeah it kind of oh. looks Europe all the buildings are connected right mm -hmm. yeah I just remembered what I wanted to talk about earlier okay. so something I've noticed is that the dad keeps on telling his oh, daughter yeah. good girl. that she's a good girl Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because I remember, like, when my sister, my niece is, like, 10 now, but I remember when my sister first had her daughter, she was very careful with us not saying that she was a good girl or a bad girl. Oh. And that always stuck with me because it, it, she was trying to communicate that, like, you are just a girl. Like, our it's love, about, our love is not yeah. dependent upon whether you're good or you're bad. Yeah. Like you're just, we love you, and so it's interesting. Like that trigger, not triggers me, but it, it kind of stands out to me that he constantly is like saying to her, good, "You're good, a good girl." And I wonder. It also for for me, it makes me think that he's like almost like prophesying over her, like you're a good girl, even though. I'm sure she's going to mess up. And in this pro in this point, she has messed up. The dad doesn't know that she messed it up. But he is, like, saying, you are good. You yeah, know? and it's setting really high expectations on and her. And maybe that's that true. Yeah, and she's feeling probably bad. Because so he, he's like, you are a good, good girl. girl. And so yeah. she's like, oh, I better live up to that. Yeah, so that's a good point. Like, what, the, what your sister did with her kids is, like, good. I feel like that's good, you know. Mm -hmm. So then the second part of that scene was that she decides to go back to the inspection place. And she's, I guess she spends all night there because she's laying on the ground and mm -hmm. she's covering herself up with that metal link. What's that? Chain clothing? mail. Chain mail. <laughs> so, funny. so anyhow, it was really funny because she's like laying there and the inspector she walks by. She must have by. been sleeping. Yeah, it looked like she Asleeping. was sleeping. She almost looked like she was homeless. Like she yeah. was just laying on the side of the road there. And then he walks by and With he catches on, on fire. Mm -hmm. and His and, bag. Yeah, his bag. Bag. His bag. bag. <laughs> hey, you're Here's from North the Dakota. Minnesota. Um, his bag catches on fire and he's like, oh my gosh, you're so hot. And she's yeah. like, oh, excuse what? me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she's she like, said, excuse, excuse me? me. You're smoking. And he's, it's funny because he's like, they they very much accentuate like the the tears and the sweat on yes. the water. It's just funny. Yes, and it's funny because it's uh, it's almost funny. Like, are they making like a sexual tension there? Are they making something where they're kind of building a romance kind of between them two? It's kind of like they're starting to do that. I mean, I haven't seen it, but they're, it kind of looks like they are, and 
Um, it's so cute that he takes her. She's like, you have two tickets to go to this air ball game or whatever. Well, because the boss is there and she wants yeah. to talk to the boss. Yeah. And so she's like, you want to go? And not, not for like relational, but she just wants to get her thing. But it's funny how they may be setting something up, even though she's not looking for that and he's not looking for that and there's nothing there right now. But then he also said, you're smoking and you're hot and blah, 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 which is funny because maybe something will happen. I've not seen it. You have. Don't say it. So they go so they go to this air ball tournament. Which is basketball, essentially, except like it's like Quidditch with mixed clouds. with basketball. So they're they're kind of introducing the cloud characters now. Because mm, we don't yeah. know much about clouds. Mm-hmm. So now all of a sudden we're surrounded by clouds. And there's lightning. And there's lightning. And, and the was- clouds are, are flying around in the air and they're throwing the basketball. Yeah, like it reminds me of Quidditch in Harry Potter mixed with basketball Mm -hmm. that's so funny that they did that and so the one player is getting booed by all of the what are the audience or yeah the audience (laughs) they're getting he's getting booed well he's also getting beat like people keep taking the ball because his mom is sick and he's like super discouraged and so he's Mm -hmm. doing worse and worse and worse and worse Mm -hmm. and then the inspector like you can see that he's a very compassionate man because he's like oh that's not That's not nice. Yeah, and that's not himself. He's not being himself. He's not playing himself. So he changes. He changes the whole atmosphere from them booing him to him all of a sudden like getting the whole crowd to do the wave and get like super excited and start encourage. Yeah, the actual wave. The actual wave. Because they're all water. Because they're all water. And to start encouraging the cloud. Yeah, and one thing that was funny when she walks through the aisle to get to the big boss. That's a cloud also. She walks past all the water, and the water all starts boiling. Mm-hmm. And they she's haven't because so she's so <laughs> hot. Yeah, and which now that you're saying it, almost sounds like a like pun. Like she is beautiful. Like she's a beautiful person. Is that and what you mean? So they're boiling. I yeah. don't know. But... Or they're like looking at her like that. I mean, I don't think that's what is being Cause... communicated. Like it's more just like she's 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 fire. so warm yeah. that like and their water that they're boiling around. Yes, her. I think. But the way that it's portrayed is almost kind of funny because she's walking so like close. in front of them. Oh, with <laughs> and her they're bum. sitting down and yeah. And I wonder because like she's walked by water before in the movie and they haven't like made water boil. But maybe actually, because, it has. Oh, I have? don't think you've mentioned or you you I haven't noticed, noticed it. it. Yeah, yeah. you have. But because she it. walks through the aisle and she has to be like rub up against them, kind of. So that's probably why they start boiling. Yeah, which I thought was funny. And then the cloud has kind of a temper, and now she kind of has a temper, and the cloud has lightning coming up, but she's all passionate about the game, the cloud boss lady. And then she is passionate about her mom and dad's store. And so they're kind of going head to head right now, which is very interesting. And they call each other like fireball and cloud oh, yeah, puffs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that like derogatory names? Yeah, I, th- I think it's like yeah. showing derogatory names. Yeah, that's what it sounded like, like fireball and cloud puff, mm-hmm. which I could see how they're both kind of like, kind of like, mean you know yeah yeah it's good so the end of the game they win because the whole crowd gets he like turns the whole crowd like on fire not necessarily on water the makes the the whole crowd gets so excited <laughs> for that one guy and then he does amazing he does so so good and they're doing and and he just gets turned around and then so they win and then the lady is so happy she's happy that they won like the boss lady and then the her and they kind of connect they use their funny names that are like usually mean against them like it's maybe like what people use like as their derogatory names and then they like will use it amongst themselves and it's not really derogatory when they use it themselves type of thing. Maybe, maybe yeah. Because they're both calling themselves like a fireball or a cloud puff or whatever. But the cloud puff lady said it meant a lot to her dad. Her and her dad would. And they just connect um, about the game and she wants to have a win. And then they have this like now new mission mm-hmm. that they're going about mm-hmm. to try to find where the leak is. Yeah. And it's also starting to show some a little bit of interest 
Oh yeah, at least yeah, on, yeah. On the fire, what what's her Amber's Amb- side? Amber, Amber, Amber's side. Yeah. Because after he oh, like yes, got everybody on... to do the wave, yeah, she's just like looking at him like, wow, that was really cool. A like, little bit googly eyes, like her yeah, eyes soften. Yeah, yeah. She was like, wow, that was really nice. Like uh-huh. you're sweet. Yeah. And then he's being all goofy now in this scene because he's wearing all of the uh, cloud stuff. Perif- is it called paraphernalia? Yeah, cl- paraphernalia. Cloud paraphernalia. I don't know. Yeah. And and he was like trying to do a high five and Yeah, with her and he they can't touch. And they can't touch so because she's gonna make him boil. Yeah. And he is gonna make her go out. Make her go out, yeah. Yeah, they can't be fall in love because they'll die, each of them. Right. Well, she'll die. Well, if he boils to death. Oh, yeah, he'll be in smoke. Mm -hmm. That's why the grandma said, make sure you marry fire. Yeah, the grandma. That was her last dying wish. They they showed it. Yeah, but did we talk about Mm -mm, it on the thing? We didn't. Um, I don't think. Yeah, the last dying wish of the grandma before she died. Which the way she died was kind of funny. She just kind of disappears. Like like Enoch type thing. (laughs) Just was gone. And her log uh, pillow is like. Well, I missed that part. Eaten up because oh, she's fire and oh, she's like laying, laying on it. On it. Um, I but she's that. like, my last dying wish is marry fire. And then she dies and, and goes away. Dies, yeah. Oh, that's so funny. Interesting. Oh, yeah. And then now the boss lady was like, it's so, you guys are lucky. She's like looking at them like for a second chance and like a new mission. So she sends them on this mission. If you can find the leak, right? Um, of where the water is leaking into Firetown, then I will forgive the tickets. But if you can't, it's over. Mm-hmm. Your shop's over. Right? Yeah. And she's looking at him. She's like, it's luck. You guys are lucky you're a cute couple. And then Ember is like, well, we're not a cute couple. We're not a couple. And then she's like, okay, bye. And she leaves. She disappears. Yeah, goes up or whatever yeah. into the clouds. I don't know. I thought that was cute. So, okay, that's where we're at. I just want to say how cute it is. So they saw the thing at their house. Now their pipes are more leaking everywhere. And they're trying to figure out where the leak is and so they're gonna go look in the canals because they figured out he remem- remembered how he got into their house into their basement and she builds this air balloon deal and um he was just so impressed yeah because by... she's like she's shining really bright yeah because she's like lighting up so that the hot hot air balloon will lift up Mm-hmm. And they're in this, like, little, like, metal basket type thing. Yeah. Yeah, and he's, he's just so impressed yeah. that what she did and how it's cool cute. that is. It was just natural for her, but he had never done or seen anything like that because they're so different, mm-hmm. you know? And that's what's bringing them together in a way, too, that that's they're so true. different. Yeah, that's true. I didn't think about that. And they're so interested in each other. The other person is so interesting because they're so different. And then he's... While he's looking at her, like, impressed and, like, ooh. Yeah, googly, ju- I just, like, the Then way- his... Yeah. Why Why was... I don't know why, but his elbow was near her. And well, his elbow starts boiling. So then he's like, oh, crap, I can't be near her. Yeah, so he, he like, wanted to be by her, her. yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's... That reminds me of the movie Four... Six Feet, Six Feet Apart. Oh. Have you seen that? No, does it have to do with COVID? No. <laughs> Well, it was during COVID they made it. Oh, of course. So maybe it was something like that. But the movie is basically like she has a disease that, and he has a disease and they're met in the hospital and they both have diseases where they can't touch oh, or, or they will get like, they will basically kill each other with the diseases that they have. And I guess they're real diseases. They're like real, they're not like COVID or something. I mean, whatever, I'm not gonna say anything about that. But it's like a real disease. Mm -hmm. And um, they talk about it. I think it's a real disease, I think. Yeah, I think, because it was kind of like a, a, like a push to be, bring awareness of this one disease. Hmm. I think it's something to do with air or breathing or, I'm not sure, I forget, I can't remember now, but they both have different diseases and they can't touch. Oh man. So they have to stay six feet apart. So they, but they fall in love. 
mm. and they can't touch. So I have goosebumps because it's such a good movie and they're both teens. It's like a teen movie and it's really cute. And they they like were falling in love. They were falling in love, but they started to like separate because they couldn't touch. Wow. And so they were like making themselves like one was pushing the other away, but they were both in deep love or whatever, oh. like falling in love. But one pushed the other one away. You can't I can't see you anymore. It's over. I can't ever be with you. And then they're like, no, forget it. She's like. We can't be together, but we're going to be together anyways. And so she's like, here. And she made this pole that was six feet apart and that they would do everything, but they would stay six feet apart. Oh, that's and, so cute. And they fell in love. Yeah. And then eventually, anyways, I don't know if you're going to watch it, but the, the end of the story is like they end up separating, which is really sad. But they write, I don't know, they end up not being together, they, but they were in love. And I think they don't end up being together. I don't know, but. It reminds me of that because they can't really be together yeah. without dying, right. basically, yeah. which is like a tragic love story. It is. Thing. It's very sad. Yeah. So this is kind of a interesting scene because they're in the hot air balloon and they're flying up. Um, they're flying past these apartment buildings. Yeah. And so it seems like this is like, what, the 10th floor? Yeah. And in the window, there's a couple of trees, and one's picking an apple off of the other one, and the other one's picking the apple off of the other one, and they're like, yeah. And they're being all, like, lovey-dovey. Lovey-dovey, and all of a sudden, they're like, oh, nothing weird's happening here. Yeah. But, but anyhow, so we we were just like, what? What does that mean? What are they saying? And Jalay came to the conclusion, which makes sense. Like... Like the the fruit has the seed in it, and so they're like, one's taking the seed of the other, and the other one's taking the seed of the other. So it definitely seems like a sexual. It's something sexual, an intercourse. Yeah, some sort of intercourse. <laughs> but um, it's just funny because I mean, there's nothing wrong in the situation because they're a couple in their yeah. apartment, private. Yeah, they with the windows open, though, and right by the window. Well, yeah, but they didn't expect some hot air balloon to go past them. But I also think what's like, interesting... Like, what about the clouds that live up in the sky? Oh, that, that's a good point. I didn't think about that. But also, but I, I think the interaction afterwards between Ember and Water, yes, whatever yeah, his name is, is that, funny. Yeah. Because they're, like, kind of, like, looking at yeah. them, and they're like, what in the world was With that? With their eyes all wide. And yeah, like, and then they look at each happened? other, and then yeah. all they do is laugh. Yeah. So it's just kind of interesting. Yeah, because it's like, what did we both just witness? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's funny. So we just saw, um, he asked her about like what she does at the shop and he says, my dad's retiring. I have to take it over if I can handle it. Um, and she kind of trailed off and cause she saw this building where she wanted to see this one flower that can stand in any element, even fire. And she was going to go in, but then there was racism or elementism um <laughs> yeah That's um good. where the water wouldn't let the fire go in there because the fire was dangerous i guess but the fu- but the flower could withstand it so it was kind of irrational that they weren't letting fire in so kind of like elementism mm-hmm. like just racism not letting them in but and it seemed like it was the first time that she had experienced that type of yes she was very young racism before yeah, yeah. she looked like she was like what four yeah or very five. tiny and she was very scared yeah they made because it they so. they were like booing them and telling them to leave to go back to fireland and that's like the first time that she started feeling it seems that she started feeling like ashamed of who yes. she was yeah. or who they were yeah and then her dad and the water guard got in a fight and she was embarrassed and ashamed, mm-hmm. and um, she never got to see the Vivisteria flower, the, that, that crazy flower that she always wanted to, and that was her one chance because the, the building flooded a few years later, so she never got to see it, and she was very upset about it, and then her temper blew up, and then she was, like, talking to him about, like, why, how do you... She, he started to cry, like tear up, because he had compassion for her, like yeah, he's all a the really racism. sweet, compassionate guy. Yeah, yeah. So he, 
had so much compassion for her, the racism that she experienced and that she never got to see that flower she always wanted to see, like her dream, you know, Mm -hmm. a little bit, kind of like a dream. And he started to tear up and he was like connecting with her. And she's like, how do you connect with, how do you connect like that? I can't even connect with one person, but you got a whole stadium to do it. Mm -hmm. And then what did he say? I was kind of confused, but we kind of talked about it. Yeah, he said um, sometimes, well, no, he, he wasn't responding to how to connect. He was responding yeah. to why, like, about the when temper. She, yeah, the temper, yeah. And he's, he says um, sometimes um, you get a temper if you're hearing something you're not ready Wait, to hear. For, yeah, which is, like, so profound and good. But at the same time, it's, like, duh. Yeah. And good. Yeah. It's just good. The other thing that I thought was cute was... Um, she was explaining a word in her language and oh, yeah. he's trying to repeat the language yeah. in a very American yeah. accent. But it was just, uh, it was a very cute interaction of them trying to connect in connect, that way. Yeah, yeah, with the language. That, that whole, conver- that was good. Like, I don't know. I don't really know movies that well, but I want to say that that's good writing. Yeah. I, I feel like, because it's like really engaging and it's just dialogue but their dialogue is like flowing really well and i it's very engaging for Mm -hmm. like the audience no and it's also like i feel like it's good it's good conversation yeah it's not like just empty yeah it's not empty conversation and it's real emotion Mm -hmm. that we're seeing and experiencing because you're like fighting for them you know Uh, you're cheering them on also in so many ways also i think it's it's fun that they're kind of um kind of uh changing the roles a little bit of having an emotional guy like he's definitely a guy like yeah and they're not trying to mix any they're not trying to mix any gender stuff like they're not confusing anything he's definitely a, like a guy and he likes her but like he's emotional and he's very like charismatic yeah and like excited about little things and like yeah. It, it's kind of challenging, like, the stereotypes that Disney would usually have. And then she's a lot more, like, closed off, and she's got the temper. Yeah. And, and she's, I don't know, like, she's usually what people would stereotype a guy to be like. Yeah, that's true. So that's that's true. It's kind of interesting and yeah. cool. Um, um, one thing you said, um, that he can connect... You were saying something and it made me think. Oh, of like something. connecting with the way, like how yeah. he connected with this, he, the the audience. Yeah, that he connected so well. But I think we we're kind of we already talked about that. Where I'm trying to think, I thought it was really interesting that he's able to connect so well. But I think I was gonna think of it, say something else. But I well, yeah, because she she was like, "How do you do that? Yeah, like, I can't even connect. You connected with the whole stadium. Yeah, and I can't even connect with one customer. Person, yeah, and they. In that way, like, relationally or friendship-wise even. I don't know where it's going, but it looks kind of romantic a little bit because they're in a hot air balloon and all lovey-dovey a little bit. But they're friends right now. And so, like, it makes them a good pair because they can learn from each other. I don't know what he can learn from her. I guess random things like hot air balloon. I don't know yet. But um, there's probably going to show us what he can learn from her. But it's almost like she can learn so much from him and, like, gain so much from his like um personality and lifestyle and thoughts away the way he thinks you know yeah but sure. it's he's very interested and engaged in who she is mm-hmm. and what she's about so he's clearly learning from her and interested in her yeah. you know okay so they're in the hot air balloon and he all of a sudden spots the spot <laughs> the spot with water and he's like oh that's the place so they land right there in the canal and they're like walking around trying to figure out there's a huge hole in the wall and so they walk through it and just at that moment a huge ship um goes by and Mm -hmm. so there's like this huge wave of water that comes down into the canal and so they're running running for their lives and he is like flailing in the water and she (laughs) she, he's like ah and she gets to like come out um out of the water and so she's safe but then she like burns off a piece of piece of metal Mm -hmm. and like helps him come out and then 
they found some sandbags and so it was really kind of sweet because he gets in front of the rush of water and like even though it looks like it's a little painful he like takes takes up, on the water he takes on the water that's coming in so he's like becoming big big yeah big, chubby big. um and she's throwing these sandbags and then he sandbags it up real quick and um so then they like kind of come up with a plan you know that block it off yeah this is going to be blocked off until um the engineers can come and fix it and whatever mm. and then they're going to say goodbye but then um the water guy what's his name i always forget his name i don't know he said you can hang out with a water guy <laughs> so the water guy oh. is like um oh but can i ask you something whatever and uh they're kind of flirting a little bit yeah, totally. shy a little bit and he's like um can we meet up in the city tomorrow? tomorrow? And she's like, oh my gosh, no way. My my dad would boil you alive. Yeah. And he's like, well, he doesn't need to know. And um, it doesn't have to be a big deal. We can just do some pruning. Nothing is... <laughs> nothing weird. <laughs> nothing weird. A li- we could do a little pruning. Just Maybe a little, little pruning. Maybe or we could pruning. just hang out. Maybe a little pruning. <laughs> so we're, we were both and we like, just what? Yeah, like super suggestive. We just saw that. <laughs> scene right before maybe it was a joke delay saying a joke it must i think be a it's joke. a joke just because they know that they can't even touch each other yeah um but let it, alone but i think he was just like haha we just saw those people do that so yeah. why not just make a joke about it but nobody laughed like she didn't laugh and he didn't laugh yeah i don't know <laughs> super suggestive pretty suggestive kind of yeah. sexual yeah clearly but kids wouldn't Kids Kid, wouldn't they wouldn't pick it. up on just, it. Just adults would. So. Yeah. Can you hear me chewing a grape? Just a little bit. Oh, that's crazy. Okay. Just a little bit. Well, they're going to the movie. Wait, wait. There was more leaks. The people were all upset. The guests, the, the regulars. She went to go fix it. She sees that it's time to go because she was going to meet that guy, the water guy. And you said that the mom can smell love? Or was she wearing a perfume? Oh my gosh, I just remembered his name. His name is Wade. Oh, that's funny. Isn't that cute? Wade. Which is funny because I actually, in real life, know a guy named Wade. That's hilarious. And he's just like him. Really? And he kind of looks like him. He's, he, mm-hmm. I don't know. Broad-shouldered? Broad-shouldered, yeah. And the hair, like, sticking up like yeah. that. Yeah. Pineapple hair. Um, Sorry, what were you saying? No, the mom goes... She, can I smell something on Ember? And you said that she can smell love, but immediately I was thinking, oh, perfume. And she's thinking, oh, she's wearing perfume? That's so odd. <gasps> that means she's going to be with someone she likes. But no, it's because she, she, can, she can smell, smell love. Because she does that for, uh, fortune-telling mm-hmm. love for, uh, incense Oh, thing. yeah. And so she can act, she claims that she can smell love off of people. Oh. And so all of a sudden her daughter walks by and she's like... <laughs> Do I smell love on Ember? Ember? Yeah. Um, and so now she's going to meet him. And, yeah. And and the the mom is, like, now she's curious. Yeah, and she's really excited. Mm-hmm. And the little boy tries to, like, woo her, but she blows the fly, the fly, the flower, cinder, burns up to c- cinders. Burns into cinders. And they're going to the movie Tide and yes, Prejudice, which Tide is cute. Yes, Tide and Prejudice, because it's in Watertown. I, I do appreciate the uh, the puns in this movie. Yeah, so good. It's so, so, so cute. <laughs> so they go to Tide and Prejudice. He's, like, crying because he's so excited. She walks past him, and, and he's, she, like... And she's very much, like... Hide it. Don't show your emotions. Don't show your emotions, yeah. Yeah. And he's so giddy. Do I have something on my face? No, I was just scratching oh. my face. <laughs> oh. Yeah. She's like, he's so giddy and like showing everything and like jumping up and down and like doing high kicks and stuff and all giggly. And she's like suppressing it. And then he's, she's embarrassed in the movie because he was crying. Is that what it was? I don't or know. She just she's, like, she's just like, it seems like in her culture, like emotion is not, is not as acceptable. At yeah. least, like, crying emotion. Yeah. And he's all about it. Oh, yeah. He's just constantly crying and excited, and it's, it's super cute. Yeah. And they take the picture, and all it is is light. They can't see except their eyes, but he, like, loves it. 
Uh huh. And she's like, "What the heck? This is dumb." And he like loves it. And then they're like at like a a perch in the yeah, building. like a viewing, a viewing, a perch, a, a place where you can view <laughs> like the scenery, the city. And at first, the clouds that come up next to her, her and him are looking. And the well, clouds, she was a little cactus. The one, the little cactus oh, it was, a was cactus? looking at her. Oh, like, and she was very with suspicious. A dirty look. Yeah, like scared, kind of yeah. like oh, she's not safe. <laughs> Mm -hmm. She looks dangerous, which it would be in general, but whatever. And, um, but she's not dangerous, obviously. And so then, but she starts like loosening them, the clouds up by making shapes on the buildings, looking at look with smoke. Yeah. With smoke, which is clouds, which like connecting with them. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, Yeah. Because she's connecting on their level, which is clouds and puff and smoke and it makes them feel comfortable. And then he's just falling more in love, like all googly eyed with his eyes on hand, his head on her, his hand, looking at her. And then he pretends not to be doing that, like itching his neck instead. I also think the choice of like clothing style is interesting. Like her clothes have changed. You mean? Um, no, 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 no. Like the whole time, like she'll wear, she'll wear like a, a black hoodie. Oh yeah. Or. You know, and then she's kind of rough around the edges, like, with her mm. fire and stuff. Like, she seems like the type of, like, person that you'd see, like, on the streets with tattoos and whatever. Mm-hmm. And then he, he's always wearing, like... like preppy more? He, yep. He definitely has, like, the preppy type of style, and his hair is, like... All pineapple. Kind of like the football player type, mm-hmm. and he's got kind of that build as well. Mm-hmm, and the then preppy. I think he's mostly wearing, what, like a... Like a preppy tee. Like, like a, a preppy t-shirt with some, yeah, khaki pants or something. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Like a polo. It would be like kind of like a polo maybe or something. Yeah, so the choice in style is kind I of never, fun yeah. to, to see as well. And they're falling in love. Okay, so she was just walking home after that, and then she was like wanting to like touch the water after or whatever their date. after their date, yeah, and the she was underneath the tram, oh yeah, because the, they tram. were dancing, mm-hmm, and she wanted to touch him, but then the the land went in front, the land dude went in front of between them, and then he got pushed into the water fountain, he just made adversity made like did well in adversity and turned into the water fountain, and then. After the date, she was walking, and the the water tram was, like, over her, and she was, like, wanting to, like, touch water, but she didn't, and then it was her shop was right behind the waterfall of the tram, so she walks in, and then um, the next day, water was leaking, but then he delivered flower had flowers delivered to her, but it was him in the water, the water guy, and then he had to tell her news. So she brought him to the downstairs and they were talking. He had bad news that they weren't able to get it fixed. Right, yeah. And then the dad came down and was like, what the heck's going on? What's going on? Oh, it's him. It's the water guy. And she, he was mad. And he, he like, they both lied about that he's a food inspector instead of a building inspector. Try, and he tried all the spicy food, even though it made him boil and like he could die. He tried it anyways. And for her... And so that they could keep their secret and keep her under wraps and protect her and um, not tell the secret that they're trying they're trying to fix it before the dad knows about it. And he does it like a champ. It was hard, but he did it. He was like boiling. But then at one point um, at the end, oh, he yeah. was like, oh, wow, you know what? It actually tastes really good after it made it's it like, like not into so a tea. hot. Yeah. Yeah. And so, he, yeah, he made it like into a tea. He he put a couple of embers into mm-hmm. uh, a yeah like a mug a, cu- a mug yeah um and then he like put his water in it and then that's where um the dad gets super super mad he's like oh water they're always trying to water us down yeah and so he, he bans he him. used that trigger word on him or whatever yeah he did and he tries to ban him and the other thing um. There, there is something kind of cute because the dad, because it's his second language, English is. Oh yeah. Um, he keeps getting things like yeah, little little sayings mixed up, and yeah. he says the wrong word, so he's like lying through his feet, lying through his feet, and then he's like, um, she's like teeth, uh, 
he's gonna get panned not yeah banned. yeah and so she like corrects him every time because his just english kind of is kind of broken a little bit yeah and so then they then they go to the beach and she's like dying out like, she's like so, so sad. sad and disappointed and discouraged she's like practically dying out her and flame is like going out he's just looking at her with like these really sweet like yeah. loving eyes and he thinks she's so um, beautiful she's like i'm just a bad daughter mm-hmm. and um there's that switch like yeah it's like that switch where she's been trying to be the good daughter and mm-hmm. live up to her dad's expectations yeah. and all of a sudden she's realizing that she can't really um, do that you know she's not doing it right now anyway mm-hmm and then the thing about the sand and the glass. Yeah, because he sees, like, she's melting the sand and turning it to glass. She, he's like, "What? look what you did to the sand. It's turning to glass because she's so warm, hot. And because he finds something beautiful in, like, every situation that they're doing. And everywhere it's, like, hard and bad. He's always finding, like, the good in it. And he's like, look what you did to the sand. And she takes a ball of sand that's now glass and molds it into like this flower and she turns it over and he's like it looks like a vivisteria and it gives her the idea inspires her how to shut the that um wall that's supposed to be a dam but it's broken and she uses the sand that they piled up and turns it to glass and then a big the a ship drive floats by and pushes all this water in and it it she it shows them that it works you know, which is so interesting. It's so cool to see the water behind the glass. And the glass that she made looks like water itself. Because she made it like, like as if it's splashing out. Oh, so I it looks really cool. Like that. she made yeah. like her version of water. Yeah, I didn't you know? even think about that. I thought that was really interesting. So they're going to see if it passed the inspection, the glass. Another little random thing that I saw. Uh, yeah. Like... I don't know. I, I feel like um, a good story is when they just stick little little pieces of information or little clues here and there. And when they were sitting on the beach, there was a sunset. And, the, and it touches the water. Yeah, it was like... I saw that. Like, I noticed There that. was like the beach. And then the sunset is like this really bright red orange color, just like she mm-hmm. is. Mm-hmm. And it's like barely touching. And then all of a sudden it like goes to the next scene. Yeah. I know. I noticed that. I'm like, they're kind of like giving a clue, like the fire is touching the water, like the sun is fire. It looks like it's touching the water. Yeah, that is interesting because I did notice that. And I was like, oh, it's like them touching. But then the next scene has nothing to do with that. Yeah. Really. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's just run through this, the scene. So basically what happened, we, he gave her the flower. I think we already talked about that. Um, but then she was in her bed looking at the flower. It was so cute on the ceiling. And then she hears her dad cough, goes down and then helps her dad. And he says he can trust her now. She, he did good. She did really good. And then, um, he says like, you're such a good girl. And then he goes to bed. And then she gets really worried about losing the store because she looks at the pamphlet and then she runs to go see the water boy. I forget. I don't even know his name. Do you know his name? Wade. Wade. (laughs) Cute. It's so cute. Um, So she goes to see Wade and then the mom smells love. So then she obviously has to follow Ember and she's like wants to see what this is all about or where where she can smell the love. So she wants to see where. Her love is, whatever, (laughs) who she loves. And it's Wade, obviously. And so she's trying to follow her down the street, kind of gets to the apartment. Um, Ember and Wade go in to see her parents. And it's like this really uppity, really nice place compared to where she lives. Mm -hmm. And the mom is not allowed in because it's only for residents. Yeah, they have like a guard. Yeah, they have that sometimes in apartments, like really nice apartments. Mm -hmm. But again... Sometimes a little stereotypical, but, um, and so then, um, she gets up there and 
the mom is so cute and nice and friendly and like super open and like loves wants to get to know her or whatever she can't hug her but then she tries to go into their apartment or wherever they live the condos and it's all water like a pool in their house and she, obviously she can't walk on that so he gets her a floaty seat and um and she like floats across the living room on this floaty seat <laughs> and the mean little kids are like will you die if you fall in the, if you fall in the water and then the dad of the marco and polo the little boys like takes him away and is like don't hate us or whatever and then you wait you talk about the next part the two the sibling wait so, so that oh yeah, yeah yeah so so he wade comes and says oh and this is my sib mm -hmm. lake or whatever her name is yeah lake i think lake and so sh he doesn't say my sister. So it's yeah. almost very like. Under the carpet. Under yes, the very under the carpet, under the rug. Under the rug. <laughs> yeah. And then he's like, and her girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's very, it's very subtle. You yeah. could miss it. You could miss it. And almost it make it be normal. Like you didn't even notice it. I didn't notice it at first. I know. Of. Yeah. I, I noticed it. I don't know. I just. Yeah, but, but I noticed that you didn't, and I was like, oh, you should rewind it. Yeah, yeah, so they're obviously trying to sneak that weird stuff in there. Woke garbage, I'll yeah. say it. And then the other interesting thing was, like, the the uncle. Yeah. Um, so yeah. it is interesting, like, the whole house, like, you can see in the background in this scene, um, you can see all of the city lights and everything, mm -hmm. and... They have jazz music in the background, and everybody's sitting really, like, fancy at the table. Yeah. And there's, like, art on the walls, and he's an artist, and she's an architect. And Yeah, very well-to-do jobs. And then the uncle is like, oh, wow, so I just didn't expect you to, to speak so clearly. Yeah, you just speak so clearly, and she's like, well... And everyone's, like, feeling awkward about it. Yeah, like, everyone's awkward, and she's like, well, amazing... What the, what will happen if you sleep in the same di or speaking the same language with the same dialect will do for you or whatever for your but, whole life yeah yeah speaking it your whole life yeah so so a little bit of prejudice and stereotype there but I think that's what they're trying to show but it's also interesting because it shows how open this family is compared to how her family reacted to him. Um, mm -hmm. like they're, they're very much like, okay, they do see the differences and they're yeah. pointing them out, but they're also very welcoming of her. Yeah. As opposed to like every time water walks into their, their fire store. Yeah. Um, they're, he's, he's immediately super prejudiced, racist, whatever. Yeah. And mad. So, and mad. And then it makes, the whole experience mad. But also, the people that go into maybe a more of a rundown town or area are typically seem to be, they're not like these people. They're bullying or they're making a ruckus or they're causing a problem. Whereas these people are open, friendly, not causing a problem. They want good things to happen. They want it to be an enjoyable time. They're mm -hmm. not trying to cause a ruckus or make bad things happen you know yeah that's true so that's interesting too mm -hmm. there's a difference in these type of different people too so interesting okay so um okay so where we're at is that um Somebody broke a vase in the house at the table. And so she was like, everybody was like, oh, the, the mom was like, that was new. Like, why did you do that? And then she saw, took all the glass really quick while people were arguing. And she's like, oh, I can fix it and put, melds it all together and then makes a new vase. And it looks even prettier. Did I miss something? Even prettier. And then they were all shocked. At first she was like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, you know, I, I don't know why she was embarrassed or felt like she was showing off or something but she was embarrassed and then they were all like oh my gosh and they were clapping that was incredible and the mom said she has an amazing gift the way i kind of saw it is that she loved doing it so much oh. that she totally immersed herself oh, in she, that yes and completely forgot that there were other people around yes yes that makes sense yeah 
Oh, because she really enjoys because that, she the enjoyed glass. it so much. Everybody else disappeared. She it was just her and the glass. Ah, oh. yeah. That makes sense because she really wants to do that. Wow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So, um, yeah. And then the mom's like, you have an amazing gift. And so, um, then they play the crying game and everybody's crying. And then it's her, Amber's and Wade's turn. And then, um, she ends up crying, but he talks about how he really loves her or like, not that he loves her, but he loves the light inside of her and wants to always be by her. And the light in him has never gone out or right. That there's a light that's lit up in him now. And he always wants to be by her light and it's never gone out since they met. And he always wants to be by her. And it made her cry because she felt like she could never actually be by him because she'll die. Right. Yeah. So it made her cry. And then at that very moment, the boss called him, the boss lady of Water Earth, the, the ticket sighting place called and said, you know, forget the tickets. It was made of tempered glass. So which was the glass that she had made. Yes, that she made. And so he said, she said, the tickets are canceled. So they were so excited. They celebrated. And then it was basically the end of the night. The mom kept the vase and she said, I slipped out at, at dinner time and I made a call. I have, a, I know an amazing architect firm. They're looking for an intern. I gave them your number. They're looking, they want to talk to you. And then Ember got super mad because she feels trapped because she has to run the shop and she doesn't really want to run the shop. And that's what her temper has been telling her. And then Wade was all confused, right? Yeah. That happened. If there was like a realization in her when her his mom offered the job yeah that that was actually what she wanted to do and she yeah. didn't want to be a part of the shop and she was but she feels so much pressure from her family which in a lot of cultures maybe that they're trying to like what his culture is is what they're trying to maybe exemplify is that you're an independent person more independent western culture whereas her culture might be more what is that word again when they are not individualistic but community community yeah but it's like they always they help like a family all puts their money together so like a kid will go to work and they put money towards the family it's all like helping each other you know Mm. what i mean yeah i I forget i can't remember the the word Yeah, but she's in kind of maybe that more of a culture. And so she feels trapped. Like, they want her to run the shop. She's supposed to run the shop. It's everything that their whole family has worked towards. And they're expecting her to run the shop. And so, but she doesn't want to let them down. They mean more to her than the shop or anything she could do. But it's not what she wants to do. Was there anything else we forgot? What Any comments? I thought it was really interesting and really cool when she did her gift and the mom offered her a job. I thought that was so cool. I was re- getting really excited for her, you know? The hard part is almost like her parents are holding her back, mm-hmm. you know? If yeah. I'm something, she... Well, they don't even see the gift. Yeah, they don't. No. They don't see it as a gift or as something that could actually propel her forward and help her to do better in life, maybe potentially, you right. know? And do better for her kids, her future kids and family that would actually be help her to have a better lifestyle, more income. And she doesn't even want to do the shop. Yeah. I love this movie. Yeah, no, it's, <laughs> it's a very so good movie. So good. There's a lot of layers to it. Yeah, there is. You should really watch the um the producers the producers side of it because a lot of this movie mm-hmm. is based on like his experience growing up as a second generation south korean mm. mm-hmm. so it's it's fun for me watching this a second time and seeing all of the little things that he mentioned from his own life and being like oh that's why he put that in there oh that's why he he put that in there well maybe i'll do a producers uh, like a podcast on the producers one because yeah, that would be interesting that's really cool we'll who see. knows maybe he'll watch it and woo <laughs> or not watch it listen, listen to, to it. it yeah 
Okay. Okay, so I think the mom caught them. She was super upset. Water and fire can't be together. She does her fire. They light the thing on fire. She lights the stick on fire because she has to read if they're a perfect match, the love. And she says, see, you can't, the water can't light. So water and fire can't be together. They can't be true love. So, but then he lights the, the stick on fire based on, because like a microphone, a magnifying glass <laughs> lights it, <laughs> lights it with her fire. And um, I don't know. She didn't tell us if they're a perfect match, but I'm assuming they are a perfect yeah, match. Yeah, because the way she that was, she was looking up, she yeah, was like, huh? Shocked. She was shocked. Yeah. And they're like circling each other. And he was trying, and the dad came down, and then they were, like, shoving him out the door. You have to leave. You can't be here. Are we a perfect match? He asked, and then he they slammed the door on his hand, and then his, <laughs> he turned to water and went down and went away. Um, and then they all talked, and, and the dad made Ember's fireplace, like, the sign. He's retiring, made this sign, and the shop is going to be hers. So, I don't know. The... I thought it was really, really cool, like the belly thing that they did and turned it into a magnifying glass so that they found a way. It's like he was showing, like, they found a way to be together. Like, even when the world, and it, it says it's impossible, which I'm thinking, how are they going to have babies? I think the whole time I'm thinking, <laughs> how are they going to have babies? And is the baby going to be half water, half fire? Oh, my fire? goodness. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah. How will that work? You know, I think that's the one thing I'm thinking. Are they going to be half fire, half water? And how would they separate? How would it be? Oh, and then how would they? They will just make smoke. Yeah. Oh, they'd make smoke. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, I just keep thinking and wondering about that. So um, they'll actually make clouds. Yeah, clouds. <laughs> Smoky clouds. And... I'm thinking about, what was the other thing I was thinking about? The dad. The dad um, made the sign for her. And she's like, oh my gosh, it's like forcing her into it. When she already wants to do that other architect job. Yeah. She like finally came to a place of realizing what she actually wants. Yeah. And then uh, the dad mentions that he's going to retire and that. She's going to take over the place. Yeah. In two days. Yeah. So, and, and probably the internship thing that she's looking at is probably going to start. They're looking for it one now. So it could start probably around. It's probably going to start the same time or something or they're he leading up to that. And um, it's like he's forcing her into this, but she doesn't even want to do this. So, And then at the end, she's crying. Mm -hmm. looking at the sign turning it on and off which is interesting because she said she had never, never cried, cried in her life and all of a sudden now now she's she cried with wade with the family that and one, now she's in her room crying about the fireplace yeah so cute okay oh okay okay so she decides that she and him can't be together anymore and so she comes to his apartment and gives him the vivisteria ball the vivisteria glass ball that she had made mm -hmm. and so he's like oh that's so sweet and then he's like wait a minute why are you why are you giving this to me and so she, like at that moment he realizes that she's breaking up with him mm -hmm. and he's like wait, wait wait i need to show you something and so it's really, really, really sweet. Mm -hmm. He takes her to the museum where the Vivisteria is. And Gail is there, the big cloud lady. And um, so he comes up with this plan where the cloud blows into the water and mm -hmm. makes a bubble large enough for her to enter it. And breathe. And, and breathe stand. for 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then um, he, he jumps in the water and pulls the bubble all the way into the vivisteria tree mm -hmm. or around it and so as because the, the the museum is flooded right so everything is underwater and so as she's getting near it with her fire light all of the vivisteria start opening up and like coming alive and because they're coming alive then she's like getting super mm -hmm. excited and she gets brighter and so the whole museum underwater 
it is like lit up, lit yeah. up and just super beautiful. And the animation, they did a really good job with the animation. Yeah, kind of like Moana, kind of like those really pretty Disney movies that are bright, beautiful colors, pinks and blues and teals and magentas. And they do a really, the, the colors are so pretty. Yeah, it, it was it was a really beautiful scene. And then all of a sudden, she starts running out of air. Yeah, the bubble and keeps so getting smaller. There's like a moment of uh, adrenaline rush, and mm-hmm. they're like swimming up towards the exit, and you don't think they're going to make it. And all of a sudden, boom, they like come out of the exit. Mm-hmm. And, um, and that's when he's like, once they're out, he's like wanting to touch her hand. And she's freaking out, and he's like, "No, like let's let's just we've try never it. try it. see what happens." And so they they like they they touch hands, and they realize that they don't like he doesn't boil, mm-hmm. and she doesn't. What's the word? Go I'm looking out. For? Yeah, like, she doesn't go out. But yeah. there's this like chemical reaction, or yeah. like just like. St- that they're staying perfectly fine. Yeah, and... like he they're kind of evaporating. Yeah. But they're but they're staying intact. Yeah. And so then um they're hugging and dancing. Yeah, they and... start dancing because one of the scenes they where they really realize like, "Oh man, I wish we could touch each other." was when everybody, everybody in the park was dancing around yes. them. Yeah. And so here all of a sudden they have this chance to dance and they're dancing, dancing and what is it that he says that makes her like all of a sudden like wake up? Oh. This perfect... Oh, I'm so lucky. I'm so lucky. I'm yeah. so lucky. And all of a sudden she has this like Memories memory of, of her oh, dad yeah. saying that like that sh- he's so lucky to have her. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden everything comes back and she's like we can't be together because I have to go run the shop and I open up tomorrow. Mhm. And it's just like She's having this huge internal struggle. It's like all or nothing. It's either all him and nothing for her parents or all the parents and nothing with or all the him or nothing to do with the parents or all the parents and nothing to do with Is him. Is that like a, a woman thing? I think maybe. I don't know. I don't know because... Because I, I feel know. like... I don't know. I feel like that happens to me where like I start... A journey, and I'm like, everything else in my life mm. is on hold, or or I think everything has to go on hold. I don't know. I think specifically with relationships, that like with this, she there's such a maybe maybe, but I think in relationships maybe it's a different, completely different thing than anything else. I feel like when you're in a relationship, you know? Mm-hmm. Is that what you mean? Yeah. I don't know. I was just... Because he seems to be very much like, no, we can we can do this. Like, But his parents love her. And there's no issue between her him, her and the parents. It's his... Her, her parents want nothing to do with him and don't think it can work. And they just don't... They look down on water and... The dad and parents are very judgmental against water. Yeah, you know, that's true. And are against it. She has more at stake. Yes. Yeah, that's true. He doesn't have anything at stake. Well, except for he would be hated by her parents. <laughs> like, yes. He, but he's just not worrying about it. He doesn't care. Yeah, he's just like, I'm not going to worry about it. She's worth way more than that. Yeah. And he was, he's willing to go through anything with, to do with that. He's willing to go through with it for her. Right. You know. So then then what happened at the end? She's like, this is, oh, oh yeah, she goes on the train. She's like, this can't work. Yeah. Oh, and he says something that's kind of. What does he say? Hurtful. He goes, this whole time I thought that you were a strong person. Yeah. And now I just A little manipulative. Yeah. Yeah, a little manipulative. A little yeah. manipulative yeah. as soon as I... See. He's not really getting his way. But that's the first time where he's kind of been like that. He's really not... Well, but he's hurt. I mean, I don't blame him. Like, she's... They were just hugging and all of a sudden, and boom, dancing. she changed. Out of nowhere. And he's not getting where 
there's like she she wants to be with, she loves him but yeah. there's this crazy switch in her that is her parents in her that is keeps pulling her away from him of like this background of her of her lifestyle and her parents and who her family is that's not necessarily all of who she is mm-hmm. and that seems to keep pulling her away from who she really is and what she, the life that she truly wants which is him and the glass blowing or architect whatever yeah that's what she wants but maybe there's a little bit like she doesn't feel like she's good enough either because she says all I am is fire and that's all I'll ever be it's easy for you rich water or whatever yeah like and rich I totally, kid growing up in that culture but I'm yeah. fire and that's all I'll ever be and I and that's interesting because I've I've had friends who have I've I've heard them say that kind of stuff about you know themselves and their families and so that's interesting where they feel like they can't get out of that yeah either they don't yeah I don't know. They can't, they can't break out of it or they don't deserve to break out of it Mm -hmm. or it would be like unfair to like, it would be, it would be almost, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, like it would be almost like uh, breaking the ceiling. Well, like, like going against your family. Oh yeah. 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 To to, to succeed in something else. Because you are the one that did it. Mm-hmm. But shouldn't your family be happy for you? Uh, I don't know. And maybe the shop thing is like, this is what we succeed as a family. We do this as a mm-hmm. family. And if you go off and succeed somewhere else, then you leave us behind and we won't succeed at what we've done. And then she also has that other obligation of like, my whole, she said my whole family has given their entire lives and sacrificed their whole lives to give me this sacrifice to be here. That only, that big of a sacrifice only deserves another, my, to give my entire life to them. Mm-hmm. Sacrificing my own life. Yeah. Well, maybe she'll just run the shop and then when she has kids, that's not water. When she has fire kids, she'll let them be whatever they want to be. I don't know. <laughs> That's not how this movie will go, probably. No. Okay. So, retirement party started. Daddy's so happy. And um, Wade interrupts and says, I love you. This whole big spiel about how he loves you and how there's no ways that they could be together. And that, but there's also, they touched and that their chemistry completely changed. And that they did touch. That's what he said. And the dad goes. What did the dad oh. say? <laughs> I can't remember. What did the dad say? He said something funny. He goes. Oh, yeah. What kind of food inspection what is What kind of food, food inspector <laughs> are you? What kind of food inspection is this? <laughs> He's like, this is the food inspector. What kind of food inspection is this? Ridiculous. That was the funniest thing, I think, of the whole movie. <laughs> That was so good. And um, and then the mom says, no, this is true love. Because she says, no, I don't love you. After he says, I love you. She says, no, I don't love you. And he's like shocked because he's like, I think you'd love me too. She says, no. And then the mom says, yes, no, I saw it. It is true love. Um, and the dad's like, what the heck? And then... She says, she screams in his face, I don't love you. He gives her the Vivisteria glass and then walks away. And is so sad. And the dad says, I'm not retiring anymore. I can't trust you. You broke the pipe because Wade kind of slipped on accident that she broke the pipe and not Wade. And then one other, what was the other thing? The other thing is that you're seeing Oh, yeah, you're seeing this this water dude, Wade. And... I can't trust you. I'm not retiring. He goes in the house 
And then she runs away to this lookout point. The boy, Wade, is going to fly. They're giving him a ticket to fly all over the world and travel and heal his broken heart. And they're so funny with their emotions. They're all crying about how sad he is and how horrible this is that they're broken up. And she goes to look to a lookout point, sees the glass break and the water flood, starting to flood Firetown. One thing that I thought was interesting was that she looks at her side of town at that and it's like all like r not as nice and then she looks to the r other side and it's the water side of town and it's super beautiful and nice and big and um very rich um and she says why can't i just be a good daughter basically meaning like why can't i just do what my parents want me to do and run the shop because she wanted to throw the Vivisteria away, which means throw him away, throw everything, the architect, thing, everything she wants to do. And just do what he wants her to do. And she, mom and dad. What else? So then she's... Oh, yeah. She's standing at the lookout and she realizes... The glass that, breaks. That the glass breaks and she sees, like, some buildings falling. And so then she gets back on her the motorcycle or moped, whatever it is, and she rushes back and um, warns people, water's coming, fire, yeah, get to higher ground. The the huge flash flood is on its way to Firetown because mm. the Firetown is lower, oh, it seems. Than the other towns. Than the other Part side of, of town. town. Yeah. That's nicer. And... So she's warning everybody, warning her, warning her parents, and at the same time, Wade sees all the 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 flood going to Firetown. She he says Ember, and then he doesn't leave, and he go, and she's trying to warn her parents and help her parents, and at the same time, she gets in, jumps into the shop. They're like stranded on this like raft, mm -hmm. away from the shop, and she goes into the shop to save the blue flame, which is the old town flame the old country flame and cause it's their whole history. And then Wade shows cause she kind of barricades herself into the shop. And then it's like pouring in and Wade comes to save her, does this heroic thing. And he's like, I wanted to be more heroic or whatever, but it was still heroic. And because he squeezed through the keyhole. Oh, That's yeah. And it was, was like, all awkward. Yeah, yeah. Like he like comes out in like little pieces, and he's all disheveled, disheveled. Mm -hmm. And she goes to take sand bags and guard the blue flame, but it doesn't work, and the water comes in anyways. And then they're blocked in. And then they try to go up this other, like, um, sewer. And then, like, a sewer to go up or a pipe that goes a big... I think it was a chimney. A chimney that goes up. And then all these... Of course. All these rocks come down and barricade them in. So um, it's too hot for him. So he's starting to... Um, evaporate. Evaporate. And, and boil. Yeah, and boil, and he's dying, basically. And she's like, I don't want you to leave. I don't want you to die. You're going to die. I have to get open this. He's like, no, the water will flood, and you'll go out, snuff out. So this is better. I'd rather this happen and, like, basically him die. I'll just die for you. And, and then the, they start holding each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because and... she says, I li I wasn't telling the truth. I, I love you before. And... and because of the reflection of his water with her light... There's, like, these beautiful reflections on the walls of the chimney. Mm. And he's, like... I love when your light does that. Yeah, and it's just such a beautiful, sweet moment. They love each other. It's so sweet. And, and, he's, and he's standing there boiling. And dying, basically. Literally boiling to death. Yeah. Mm. And he's happy as a clam just to be with her and hold yeah. her. It's so sweet. I'm crying. I was crying during it. I don't want him to die. There's still 22 minutes left, and I'm like, he can't die. Can't he, like, evaporate through the rocks or something? I don't know. <laughs> um, it's so sweet. It's so heartbreaking when she's like, I don't love you, but it's like you know she loves him. 
Yeah. And the mom is saying you love him, but the dad is so dang stubborn. It's like, oh, goodness, dad. But it's the old culture, and I get it. It's hard to let go and change, and your whole life you sacrifice this, and you sacrifice to go there, and you want them to carry it on, and it's difficult. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> so... I just said, like, what if he evaporates into the rocks and he's just sitting there on the rocks? Well, they, they, the next scene was her being saved. Like, they, well, they pulled, they pulled all the rubble away and she's there with the vivisteria and, like, said that she loves the vivisteria or the, uh, the fake vivisteria, the glass vivisteria, right? Oh, I thought she was with the fire. Oh, the fire. Yeah, that's what she had. And, the blue flame and she hands it to her dad and she said he saved me he's gone he saved me and she hands the flame to him and she starts crying 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 and they're not used to the crying like she's bawling and she's like i have to tell you the truth i loved him or what i did she and say? it was so sweet because they hug and then the mom comes behind her yeah and they like come down into this big Ball of fire. Ball of fire. Yeah. Fireball. A fireball. Yeah, and because she said, I have to tell you the truth, I never wanted to... I know the dream oh, yeah. was your dream to run the shop, but the it's never been my dream. Here, I'm sorry, and hands the flame, and then she's crying. It's not my dream. Mm -hmm. And he said, it's never been my dream. You've always been the dream. Mm -hmm. And I definitely started crying right there, because that's amazing, and... I don't know what else you can say because that's so sweet, you know, that she was always his whole dream. I'm mm. going to cry. And um, then they're ball crying, crying in a ball. And while they're crying, all of a sudden Wade starts kind of crying. Like, it's just like the tears, you like can, little drops. Well, you can kind of you hear, hear him. You hear him go, oh. Oh, yeah. yeah, and she hears him and knows his voice. So then she just immediately starts saying, "A butterfly, it's, yeah, it's windshield, funny how she half a butterfly." Yeah. It, it's exactly the same things that he, he said. said during the crying game to get her to cry. Yeah, and she had memorized them, and it's like butterfly, windshield, windshield wiper, half a half butter a butterfly. butterfly. It's like super random yeah. stuff. A, an old man waited his whole life for this one girl and whatever they're separated whatever I don't know but then he starts bawling bawling and and then the mom is saying all these things to make him cry and the, the cutest thing I saw I saw was that the mom said just make make to the husband yeah to the to, the, hu to the old to the husband the dad just say something to make water boy cry okay and and he's like hitting his leg. He's like, um, um, like to like think of something. He's like, you are no longer panned. And the and you can see his tears because he's kind of crying. And they kind of like stop because he kind of like wipes his tears away. And the the metaphorical picture of him like n like turning back to precipitation on the rocks, like actual wa water. And he kind of stops crying. And then the dad says, banned. You're no longer banned. And, like, just banned instead of panned. And then he goes, what? And he cries way more. It's so cute. And then all the tears come down. They keep saying stuff. And then, and then she, she's like, and I, and I want to go traveling with you. And I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Yeah, and be with you. And I love you, Wade. And um, he comes back out of the pan, of the bowl. And... He's like, your chimney needs... It's almost like Pride and Prejudice when he's, like, proposing to her and she goes, your hands are cold. Like, as if that's yes, supposed to be yes. And he's like, she just said, I love you. I want to marry you, be with you forever. And he's like, your chimney needs cleaning. <laughs> like, this is what it makes me think of. And, um, and he's naked, so he grabs a shirt. Maybe that was the distraction he's like um your chimney needs cleaning i'm naked and he grabs the shirt <laughs> yeah, I think so. yeah and then um they hug and kiss and the dad looks away and their chemistry changes they turn to like steam steam yeah yeah they're not but they don't each die 
Yeah. Uh-huh. And the mom's like, I knew it. A perfect match. The nose knows. My nose always knows or something. And they're all laughing and they're holding each other and like laying on each other. It's so cute. That was really sweet. But I just love the part where he was like, you're no longer panned. You're no longer panned. And that he came back to life. That was the sweetest. I definitely was crying. Dang, this movie's so good. Okay, so a few minutes, a few months later, they show, um, like, the show is so different. Like, it's not just fire people in the shop. There's the clouds, there's the trees, there's fire, there's... Did they show any water people in there other than Wade? No. No water. No water. But lots of other cultures. Um, except no water, except Wade. But they go in there, and they're showing, like, the cloud met that other tree person and they're like fallen they like are both windbreaker fans or whatever that's called the wind is it windbreaker Windbreaker, whatever it's the that team that the it's power puffs. Lady, is that what it is <laughs> oh they're wind something it's the cloud yeah it's the cloud it's basketball the, yeah and so they're gonna fall in love or they're alluding to that and then the people that are that were regulars in their fire shop became the that people that run it which is what i said can somebody else run it for them and they own it and make the money but somebody else works for them or is like a general manager yeah it was the the people who were always sitting on their ash yeah on their ash (laughs) the regular sitting on their ash their hot ash yes um and then she comes in wearing this really cute outfit or whatever that's different. It's like a really cute jacket. And she's like saying hi, like going to say goodbye, basically. And then Wade comes in with another track jacket on. And he's like, yeah, Ember, it's what's time. up with that? I don't know. There's like, it's like, <laughs> it's like, it's like, like she's moving. Yeah. And she's moving on to like this, like more nice part of town. So she has nicer clothes Maybe, and yeah. to match his nice clothes. And she just is wearing nicer stuff now. And so, because she's going on to this really nice internship or whatever. It's the best in the world, she said. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, um. So they end up going to the train with Yeah, he says his, it's time to go. His mom and her parents. Yeah. And they're doing the, the mom does the drop, drop. Baby boy drop so when awkward. she's going. I know. And then they sit there crying and the mom and dad are drop, like, drop, drop, baby, baby drop. <laughs> it's so, so weird. And the ma- the dad was like, are you sure about this one? Because they're just sitting there bawling, crying, like with the protruding water tears, <laughs> yeah, like, like you mentioned before. <laughs> it's like a fountain. And she goes, yes, I'm sure. And then they talk. What She's like, kind of like saying, it's probably not even going to work out. It's not a big deal. I'll be back. Not the relationship, but the internship. Yes, the internship. <laughs> like, maybe it won't be anything and I'll just be right back. And they said, don't worry, we'll be here. We have a lot more time for the hanky panky <laughs> or whatever. And the mom so goes, random. oh, shoosh. Oh, shoosh. Oh, shoosh. How so cute, cute is that? Oh, shoosh. And, um... And then they're going to get on the plane, on the, on the train, on the big yacht, whatever that is. And then, right before she steps on the ramp, she turns around and does the most, what was it? It was like the most respected thing of honor. The most way you could honor somebody is to like put your is it prostrate like just lay down like on your knees and like bow to them all the way with your face to the ground Mm -hmm. and she does that to her dad and it's like um a memory of like when her dad did it to the to her grandpa and her grandpa did not do it back so it was like a sign of like we you do not have our blessing i don't respect your decision of what you're doing you're like cut off and cut maybe not i don't know but it's like not respected. Not, he's not returning the respect. Yeah, and so he, he's not putting his blessing on. on him. Yeah. So then the dad does it back. The mom and dad are like, oh my gosh! And so then they do it. The dad does it back to her, and then they go and. Did they hug it before they go? No, she just no. gets on. Yep, they just do the, the goodbye thing, and then. Yeah. 
and I definitely was time. crying the most. That for some reason that was like the that part was so I was crying sweet. the most. Yeah. Because well, it's it like, shows reconciliation yeah, finally. Yeah, like full circle. She and she also because he felt like he needed to go to this new world, and that's what he needed to do for his family, and 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 he did that. And the dad did not approve. If you leave Fireland, then you'll lose who you are. Is what he thought. And he didn't lose who he was. And then um, she felt like for her family, for her and Wade are going to be together. This is what she needed to do was the internship so that she could be an architect or the glass creator of buildings. And he honored that. Mm -hmm. So good. So on a scale of zero to ten. It's so 10 out of 10. The problem, okay, 9 out of 5, 9.5 out of 10, only because Disney's putting woke garbage in there. I think, and it's so minor things. That they're not, what they're putting in is not minor. What they're putting in is big and bad. But, yes, there's just a few things that they're trying to slide under the rug without you noticing or to normalize, which is wrong and demonic. But... If you can, if you are a person that knows the Lord and knows what you stand for and what is right and what is wrong and you're not being swayed to and fro, then you can be like, well, that's trash. But a kid, if they don't know, if their parents haven't taught them, or even if you have been taught it, but you aren't that sure of it, but you happen to see the movie, could be bad. Well, on a few ways. This is a little off topic, but like if you think about the movies that we grew up on. Yeah. You know, where they had like um I don't know, for example, uh Sleeping Beauty. Mhm. You know, they're it's kind of scary. There's always witches. Yeah, there's witches always not, magic. There's witch- always like stuff that's really not okay right and if anything you know biblically there is more that's said against witchcraft true than homosexuality true there's only like one line it's like yeah or one line maybe and we grew up with those types of movies right um i mean i didn't i didn't grow up with like harry potter but like i did i grew up with watching disney movies that had a lot of witchcraft and stuff like that and yet I knew because what my parents taught me that that wasn't okay. So I don't know. I. But again, your parents taught you. Yeah. So you're right in that. Like, if you don't know. My parents didn't teach me, but I still, I don't think I was consciously thinking as a kid, this is bad, but I was growing up even in the Catholic church where Well, I guess I don't know that they... I just knew that that was bad. Being a witch is bad. Mm -hmm. It's not good. It's not the Lord. Mm -hmm. It's not... I don't know that anyone ever said it. Even I grew up with Harry Potter where being a witch and a warlock and all that is glorified. But I didn't... Yeah. Technically. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, I'd, I'd agree with you. For me, this would be a 9 or 9.5 out of 10. It's a so really good movie. Good. The animation is really good. It's unique. It's so unique. The storyline is unique as well. And it's um, kind of adult-ish. Like, there's a lot of things that an adult can really get into this movie and enjoy it. Yeah. Where... Sometimes there's kid movies where you can't as an adult. Like, it's, there's no there's no depth to those things. Right. Where there's actually, like you said, lots of layers to this movie. And now you've seen it the second time, you're still noticing things you didn't notice before. Whereas if I watch it again, I might notice. We noticed it together, certain things. And you pointed out things I didn't see it right away until you said it, you know. Mm-hmm. Like the gay sister or whatever lesbian or whatever that is i didn't see it right well not that i i don't know i just didn't catch it i just didn't because it was so subtle you know yeah i don't know 
Definitely 9.5 out of 10. Yeah, Definitely good. highly recommend. Just know that there are some things that are some woke yuck in there. There's but there's two two scenes. The main one was that the cis sibling, and then the, what was the other one? Uh, the there's first one gay. was that little couple at the beginning with the incense. Oh yeah, they're gay too. So there's two couples. Two main scenes. And then right? there's a few rainbows in there, but I mean, yeah, but rainbows the, are. Rainbows, so it's rainbows are God's promise. It's yeah. that's what it is, and people can try to twist it, but it's not what it is. Mm-hmm. They can try to twist it, but it's not. It's not. It's not what it is. Oh no. Okay. Well, thanks for listening. Thanks for being here, Jalay. This was fun. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Georgia. I enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it, and hopefully you'll go. See it and watch it yourself because I highly recommend this movie. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks for listening to this week's podcast. It was my pleasure. Please subscribe and leave a review. It would mean so much. And share this with a friend. Thanks for listening. Love you. Bye-bye.